So how's it going so far? Is the hackathon just starting now or did it start earlier on today? Uh, it runs for a couple of days, right? Yeah, so we had the induction yesterday where we uh, where we had our top 10 teams joining us. And so the workshops begin today and this will be the week's first workshop. Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. No, no pressure, so having to go first. Sorry for the delay. We'll just be starting at 6.40. So just take two minutes more. Okay, cool. I'm going to just run and grab a drink of water really quickly, so I'll be back in one minute. Okay, so let us begin. So uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Desert Hack is a week-long online hackathon conducted by the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, Bits Pilani, to promote entrepreneurial thinking and problem solving among students. In line with our aim to bring to our audience and participants an arsenal of skills to equip them well to take on the startup ecosystem, we kick off Desert Hack 2020 with the week's first workshop on no-code app building hosted by Thunkable. Thunkable is a no-code app building platform which has been enabling people to build apps without the use of a single line of code faster and more efficiently since 2015. We would advise all of you to keep your audio and videos off. We'll be disabling the chat during the workshop, but we'll be enabling it again in the end for the Q&A session. So please drop any questions you might have then. Uh, over to you, Thunkable. Um make sure I'm not muted. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, my name is Donal. I'm um, Donal O'Hannan. I work with the Creator Success team in uh, Thunkable and uh, delighted to be presenting at Desert Hacks 2020 um, to kind of give you an idea of how to use our platform to build apps for Android, iOS, and even um, potentially for a web app as well. Um, so I'll just kick off by introducing myself and introducing the presentation uh, and then go through it then 
uh, as quickly as I can. So uh, back in 2016, um, I was maybe in a position similar to yourself where I was working with uh, clients and I was working with students uh, building apps for Android uh, and building apps for iOS. And this involved using different platforms and different tools. And so when I learned about Bunkable, um, that I could create a single project um, and export that then to Android and iOS, I was instantly interested and uh, hooked, I suppose, on, on this platform because it was going to potentially save me 50% uh, of my time, really. I wouldn't have to maintain do two different code bases. Um, I could have a single project and uh, I could test on, on different devices and, and share with the different platforms. Uh, eventually then I um, joined the team in 2017, towards the end of 2017, and then at the beginning of 2019 I took up my current position, which is the, the head of the creator success team, um, working with our, our users and our customers all over the world, um, I think as I mentioned at the beginning. So we have, yeah, lots of different problems to solve, whether that's designing an app, whether that's implementing uh, functionality, uh, connecting to other pieces of software through our, our API component or, or something similar. And then indeed, when people have actually finished building and testing their apps, uh, we wanna try and make sure that they can publish the app into Google Play or publish it onto the App Store. So yeah, that's it, no, no two days are the same. We see different apps every day, we see different users every day. And then as the platform itself is continuously um, expanding and evolving, there's new components being added in, old components are being updated. So we're involved then in uh, the testing and the documentation and communication of all, all these things to, to the user base. So uh, really, really uh, enjoyable and, and rewarding job and uh, lots of different um, challenges to keep us interested on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so you can kind of just about see my, my Twitter handle at Don Lohanlon there and at Funkable uh, in the bottom, just underneath the the screen hopefully um, and you can feel free to kind of tweet us any uh, any questions as well so uh, we have a fantastic community we have fantastic chat support and email support as well that are there and particularly I guess while you're um, working on your hackathon if you mention that you're in the desert hacks uh, hackathon uh, if you're reaching out um, we'll be able to to spot that and we'll be able to give that a bit of priority as well um, so the presentation today that I want to run through is uh, to give you some insight into what the platform is, what it's good at, and then if you have an idea in your head already of what you want to build, um, this will uh, allow you to figure out if Bunkable is the right tool for the job. And um, I'm going to look at a couple of quick case studies as to what people have built already and um, how, they've, how they've succeeded in, in marketing and promoting and uh, growing their own revenues there. Then what I'm going to do is give you some tips from the Funkable team uh, in the rapid prototyping section. So this is how we build apps or build prototypes for our users as quickly as possible. Uh, when we're trying to reproduce um, some sort of behavior or try to implement um, some sort of feature that they're looking for, um, this is what we would do. And then finally, um, I want to show off one of our new features, which is our spreadsheet integration. Uh, so this allows you to use something like Google Sheets as a, as a back end for your app. Um, so basically, you can have a, a database on uh, in the cloud. Anytime you make an update to your Google Sheet, uh, that will automatically update the app for every single user. So it's one of the most powerful components we've uh, ever released. Uh, it's got lots of different um, features and functions in it, and I want to um, demonstrate some of those to you. And I, I, because I think it's um, a really awesome way for um, setting up a a proof of concept and validating your ideas quickly. So I think it's an ideal tool uh, to use in, in a hackathon um, scenario. Okay, so yeah, the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the, um, the platform itself. I'm gonna run through the types of apps that you can build uh, with Bunkable, which is kind of everything from the most simple of apps, you know, with just a single screen and some simple components. Uh, and you can build some um, pretty pretty complex apps then in terms of uh, adding in animations and chat and integrating with other websites. And there are a couple of things then maybe that uh, Thunkable can't do or doesn't do at the moment. Uh, and I might just run through those really quickly. So it's not a kind of a, a replacement for something like Photoshop or Final Cut Pro. It's not a video editing or um, photo editing tool. Uh, it's also not a replacement for um, a system like Unity, let's say. So if you're thinking about building uh, the next Fortnite or the next Clash of Clans where you need uh, animators and you need physicists and you need coders, where you need like 
20 or 30 people uh, to build a, a very, very complex um, ecosystem and, and app around that. Uh, this is probably not the, the right tool for the job. If you're thinking about building a cutting edge uh, virtual reality app for the Oculus Rift, where you need people doing 3D modeling and scanning and, and all of those different kind of, uh, you know, highly skilled jobs, um, again, if you're at that very, very cutting edge, uh, this is probably not the, the correct tool for you. Um, but um, if you are interested in building an app anywhere on any platform, um, Thunkable is a great selection. So you don't have to have the um, best hardware. You don't have to have um, a specific type of hardware. So for, for example, if you were building on uh, for iPhone only with um, Xcode or programming in Swift, you would need to have uh, Mac hardware. Um, if you're running Windows, then you could be developing for uh, a variety of other platforms. But with uh, Thunkable, you can develop for the web, for Android and for iOS, just in your web browser. So we run best in Chrome or Safari, um, just in case you run into any issues logging in or testing, uh, I'd, I'd advise to just make sure you're, you've got the latest version of Chrome or the latest version of Safari. But basically any uh, web browser will do. Uh, the other thing then is that one Thunkable project um, can be exported as an Android app. You can run it on an iOS device and you can also run it in the browser as, as a web app. So you can have it as a, mo as a mobile web app. Uh, you can share it to other people's phones, but you can also have it as a, like a responsive web app as well. And that can be, um, dem uh, that can be just distributed. Like you can uh, email that or send it in WhatsApp to any of your friends, colleagues, and they can test out your app. So that means that the really great thing, this is a new feature that we've only launched um, in 2020, uh, but the great thing about it is that you don't have to go through the Play Store where it might take a couple of days to get approved uh, and you don't have to go through the App Store. So Apple are very rigorous as well and it could take, if it's your first time publishing through the App Store, it might even take, could take a week or even two weeks in some cases to get through that full process. Whereas when you're publishing to the web, it's the Exact same as uh, publishing a website. You basically just click the button, upload the file, and within you know a few seconds, maybe a minute or two, uh, your your app has its own URL there that you can distribute, like I say, via email or via chat. Uh, and the the incredible thing, like I say, when I came to, to Thunkable, was that I didn't need to have three different code bases. I didn't need to maintain three different projects. Uh, one Thunkable project will will work for everything. And then the other thing, if you're looking for advice or feedback or guidance, um, we currently have a community with over 600,000 members in it. Uh, if you go to community.thunkable.com um, and people there, they share their apps, uh, but they also share their feedback on other people's apps. So this is a great way as well to, to test out your, your ideas, um, test the waters and see what people like, uh, what people are interested in. Um, and yeah, get, get people using your apps to find out if you've, uh, you've overlooked anything in terms of your, your user experience or your, your general design, let's say. Um, so that's, that's a fantastic resource. And uh, again, that's, um, I suppose, a part of the, the fact that we've been uh, operating now as a company for um, almost five years and that, that community and that user base has built up. So delighted to have um, some members of the, of the BITS community as well now hopefully joining and, and using Thunkable, I think. Okay, so that gives you hopefully a, an idea of you know, what, what Thunkable can do in general. Uh, I want to focus on some specific examples. So I've got the hashtag here, made with Thunkable. Um, and as I mentioned, my, my colleague Gautam is here. He manages this. He looks after this um, hashtag. Uh, so we, we like to spotlight on a weekly basis our favorite apps um, that people have made. Um, generally, we'll, we'll um, try and draw attention to people who have published on, on multiple platforms. So um, the Play Store and the App Store, for example. And uh, I want to show you just four quick examples of, of the types of apps uh, that people have built, um, which I think are, are quite nice. So the first one there is called uh, Veggie Alternatives. Uh, this app combines a community uh, of, um, say, vegetarian and vegans with people who are interested in having a vegetarian or a vegan lifestyle where you can um, swap tips and ideas on um, substitutions for food or again one of the challenges can be like where to find these um, alternatives uh, so the other thing they have is, is like a directory or a store and it'll list you know if you want to substitute out milk or eggs in your diet uh, where where you can buy alternatives um, what the kind of price points are and all this kind of stuff so it's a combination of like a directory a store a community so there are people using it uh, to interact with other people but there are also people who are using it just as a reference to find out 
uh, recipes and ingredients um, for their for their diet. Uh, so this is an app that's been available on um, Android and iOS for the last couple of years. Um, Ayush then, who's our who's the developer of this app, has won a number of awards in the in the UK. He's based in in England. Um, and has won a number of entrepreneurship awards for, for the, the this app that he's built with with Thunkable. Um, the and you'll, you'll see that one is featured on our on our website quite prominently. Um, another one then, it's another op opportunity. Um, if you are thinking of getting into app development, is that you can sell your app. Um, so we've got um, this is called Yesterday's Weather, and it's by a, a developer in America called Drew, and he's actually has a, a studio of of like a team of people, uh, but was able to build this app by himself was able to publish it to the App Store and to the Play Store. And this is an app then that he just sells a couple of copies of every month. So this generates kind of some residual income for him. So once it's, it's been published, it um, connects to a weather API. So um, I'm sure lots of you will be familiar with APIs. Uh, it's able to fetch the, the data for today. It's able to fetch the data for yesterday. And the interesting thing that he does here in his app is that he does a comparison. So if yesterday was a cold day and you were wearing, you had to wear your sweater, you had to wear a jacket, um, it recommends that, oh, today is going to be a similar day to yesterday. And you know, oh, I'll have to dress in a similar way. Or it'll say, oh, today is going to be a warmer day than yesterday. Or rainier day than yesterday if you're in Ireland um, it's uh, where it rains all the time uh, you'll know to, how to, to make uh, uh, the adjustments accordingly um, so yeah a really really nicely designed app very very simple um, but it, give, it has the ability to connect to this um, data online and then it's also something that when you have built an app with Thunkable you're, you're free to sell it at uh, whatever price point that you want as well and um, so again it's a nice um, nice one there to have um, an alternative option, if you're interested in, in monetizing your app, is to use our um, AdMob component. So this is by a TikTok star, TikTok celebrity called uh, Wanna Draw or Oddity Draws. Uh, she would have about eight million followers on on TikTok at the moment, and does um, drawing challenges and animations. And this is the app then built with Thunkable that kind of supports that channel. Um, so you can see what, what Audrey is drawing in her videos every every couple of days when she posts them. And then what this does here, there's, there's two kind of um, interesting elements to it. So there's a gallery of pictures. It gives you a prompt and it gives you a kind of a, a thing to draw and a style to draw it in. So you can see, um, yeah, Mike uh, Wazowski from the Monsters films and uh, you're to draw it in a, in a particular style, in the style of a, a pop star or whatever. Um, so it generates um, these prompts randomly and the other thing then that it does is there's like a, a sharing feature. So you can encourage people then to share things on, on social media, build up your, your brand, of course, and uh, being involved in Twitter and TikTok and YouTube. Uh, this is obviously a very important uh, function to have. Uh, and then, yeah, there's a monetization element here where you can see that the, uh, the app itself contains ads. So because they've got a, a big um, user base and a big following, and they're able to generate revenue. They don't need to sell the ad or sell the app, excuse me, um, to make money. They're able to generate revenue based on um, ad impressions as well. So just when you're thinking potentially of like how you're going to market it, how you're going to develop revenue uh, from your from your business or from your um, uh, from your hackathon idea, there's two different options there, I suppose, that you can um, that are open to you with with Thunkable apps. Uh, and the final one then, um, possibly not relevant in the context of a uh, short, short-term hackathon, but this is uh, from one of our, another American user called Darren, uh, and he's built a, a business, I guess, called AmbleMind around his, his kind of thunkable expertise. So as I mentioned, um, the community has been up and running for about five years now. Uh, we have lots of people with huge amounts of uh, experience and expertise, and this app, um, is, it's a fantastic app in and of itself. It allows you to send messages between different devices. So I'm not sure if you've ever had the scenario where you want to get a piece of information from your phone to your computer or your computer back to your phone, but using Send That is a, is a fantastic um, way of doing that. And uh, it uses Firebase. So it's like instantaneous. It's like real-time messaging. Uh, so that's a component that you can access directly from Thunkable. Uh, very easy to set up in your app. Uh, but also the other thing that this does is it's like a an advertisement for Darren himself. So Darren uh, is a, a consultant um, and develops apps for clients of his own. And he can show people then his apps on the App Store and in Google Play. Uh, and this is another way of, of generating business uh, for him as well. So it's a, yeah, it's 
a great tool um, in and of itself. I, uh, makes use of um, the nice thinkable components and actually Darren is an excellent uh, teacher as well so there's a full tutorial on YouTube of how to actually build uh, the send that app so you can see it's got a it's got a very nice design it's got a very uh, distinctive style and he's got a full tutorial over on his YouTube channel of, um, of how to make this uh, app uh, for yourself. Um, so I think that gives you a, a, a kind of a, a general overview a general idea of things that you can build uh, with Thunkable. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, go into the, the platform or go into the um, design side of things itself. Uh, we're going to look at kind of some of the tips that we would use ourselves for, for rapid prototyping. Um, so talk about some of our um, yeah, uh, th things to keep in mind when you're uh, working with your projects. So when you sign into Thunkable, uh, very easy, you can just use any email address. Uh, we'd recommend uh, Google or, or Gmail account if you have it. Uh, it just makes it a little bit, little bit easier, a little bit more straightforward. Uh, the first thing you want to do is, is create an app for yourself. So I've got a variety of apps here, um, public apps, private apps that uh, might, uh, if, it, if it's a public app, it'll appear in the, in the public gallery. So there are millions of apps there. Um, we've got a selection of community projects and, and if you scroll down a little bit on the home screen, when you log in for the first time, you'll see we have about 15 apps or so um, that we've built ourselves that you can, you can remix as well. So the, the whole community itself um, or the projects themselves are, are kind of open source in that regard. Uh, you're able to, to look at the, um, the functionality, the, um, the code behind it and to, to remix them. Uh, creating the app is really simple. So if we just jump onto the little animation here, all you have to do is give your app a name. Uh, obviously you can call it whatever you want. You can also rename it at a later date. You can put a category on it. So the categories are really helpful. If you wanted to build a commerce app, you can go and search the public gallery for commerce apps. And then we have a free version, which allows anybody to create um, a public app. And then there's a paid version as well. Uh, and we're giving away some paid memberships, I think, uh, as part of the, the BITS partnership. So um, looking forward to seeing the, the winners and seeing what you can uh, achieve with, with Thunkable here as well. Um, so once you've got your um, project created, uh, when you open up for the first time, you should hopefully see a screen like this. And there's, there's a lot of information here, but the thing that I've spotlighted at the beginning are the tutorials on the left-hand side. And this is just a panel built in directly to the platform with um, a, few tutor a few videos explaining how to use the platform and um, walking through a couple of simple apps. So a translation app, uh, image recognition app, um, how to use navigators, how to work with variables. This is a slightly more um, advanced topic as well, but they're just in this kind of sidebar off to the left of the screen. And I'm going to just draw your attention to the little tab here. So if you click on that tab, that will open or close the tutorial. So they don't have to be there the whole time, uh, but just to give you a quick overview of, of how that works, uh, you can choose the kind of the course that you want, whether it's the basics, basic course or the variable course, it'll pop up a, a video then. And the, these are short videos. These are kind of two, three minute videos to try and make it as, as simple as possible. And as you saw at the end there, when you click the tab, it's going to slide back out of the way and it gives you more room for, for working on your app and for developing your app. And it'll, it'll save your place in the course as well or in the tutorials. So you've got more place, more room to, for developing that as well. Um, the next thing then that you want to do is add components uh, to your app. So over on the left hand side, there's a, a section that says add components and you can see a couple of them there already, like the button, the label, the text input. So that gives you things to click on, to display text and to type in text. And if you scroll down there, we have, it's about 56 components there between visible and invisible components. There's, there's quite a few to choose from, but when you get to adding a component into your um, design, it couldn't really be much easier. You literally just drag the one that you want and you place it onto the screen. So you can reposition them on the screen, but you can also reposition them uh, up in the component tree, up in the top left as well. So uh, yeah, very simple to, um, I guess, d design a, a quick user interface, um, add a couple of properties to it. And let's take a look then at, at how to reposition. You can see that as they get added in at the moment, they just get added from top to bottom. So the next thing we probably want to understand is how to reposition the, the uh, components on the screen. Um, so because there's a lot of components, uh, we also give you a search bar. 
um, you can type in the, the name of the component that you're looking for um, or the name of what you kind of think you should, you should find. It's, it's pretty good at, at matching. Um, so you can, you can search for spreadsheets and you can search for um, arrangements and things like that. And, and it, will, it will surface up the, the relevant component for you as well. And um, yeah, also have a quick look here at how to uh, reposition things, how to get them uh, placed side by side rather than stacked from, from top to bottom. Um, so the first thing you can do is you can type in the name of the, the row is what allows you to put things next to one another and a column is what allows you to stack things from, from top to bottom. Uh, and then you can position them next to each other once they're inside the row and you can see the blue line there is just showing you that it's to the left of the switch or the label has been moved to the, to the right of the switch. Um, just like that. So you can drag them into the row. And the blue line then will show you its position so you can move it left or right like that. So very, very simple to, to rearrange and to, to reorder things either on the screen here, or you can also do this in the um, component tree up in the top left. Um, okay, so now that you've got a couple of components in, um, in your design, you probably want to customize how they look. And obviously, uh, if it says, you know, button one, or if it says label one uh, on the, on the user interface, you probably want to change what it says to give it a bit more uh, of a meaningful um, explanation. So over on the right hand side, every component has its own set of properties. So if we click on screen one, you'll see the properties for screen one. If you were to click on button one, you would this would change and you would see a different set of properties then uh, for button one. So to see that in action, we can change the text property of our label. So this could be our sound, you know, you could mute or unmute uh, the audio, let's say if we were uh, making a music app, um, and then we've got a uh, text property again here for the button, but you can change things like the background color and the font size. You can change the padding. You can change the shape of the button. Uh, there's quite a few different things to do here. You can also change the size. So there's two useful ones here, fill container, which takes up all of the space on the screen and then fit content, which will shrink it down and make sure that it only takes up the, the size of the elements that are inside of that component itself. Uh, so we'll just hang on now till we resize the component. So you can see that the row itself, um, when we click on here, row one takes up uh, most of the screen. You can see the red border around it. It's um, fill container. Changing it to fit contents will make sure that it's only the, the height then of um, the components inside it. And the same properties exist there for the width as well. So you can have a fill container, which will be the width of the screen, and then fit contents would make it narrower. Um, and then you can also do things like give it a pixel value. So you could have it be 100 pixels high and 200 pixels wide. That's perfectly fine. And uh, depending on your use case, um, and if you're developing for the web in particular, you can use percentages. So you can create a um, responsive layout. So you can get things to be 30% of the height or 50% of the width. And that means that it would always take up half the width of the screen. So whether it's uh, in portrait mode, whether it's in landscape mode, uh, whether you're on a widescreen desktop, whether you're on a, a smaller phone, um, it'll always be, if you use that relative sizing, um, so that's all in there as well. So there's lots of things and lots of properties to, to consider and to play around with. Now, just to run through, as I mentioned, some of the um, tips for things that we would use ourselves on a daily basis. Um, you, you, the scenario here is that you've um, added in your buttons and your labels, you've got the font that you want, you've got the size that you like, the color scheme is, is dialed in really nicely. Um, and now you want to have um, several buttons or several labels that all have the same, um, same layout and same design. So what you can do is uh, in the top right hand corner here, there's a little, it looks like a copy icon. Um, and this allows you uh, to duplicate components. So let's have a look at that in action. We've got a button here um, and we can duplicate it and it creates a copy and we can duplicate it again and it creates again an exact copy of the, the style. So we could have whatever our brand colors are. Um, we could have the, the shape and the size that we wanted um, and we're able to make copies of that really quickly. So that's a huge time saver. Once you, it means that you don't have to manually style um, a component every time you, you add one to the screen, it means that you make one component, you style that one component uh, the way that you like it. And then using the duplicate feature up there, uh, you're able to clone it uh, multiple times or as many times as you want. And you're not even limited to having it cloned on that screen. So in the next example, we'll see how you could clone one component and you can uh, use it on, on different screens as well, which is again, super 
useful to have and it's uh, one way where you can kind of work uh, smarter rather than working harder um, so let's create a new screen first of all um, so there's a, a plus uh, button up here in the middle uh, besides so you've got all the screens are shown in the in the tab along the top and this plus button here that I've highlighted um, is how you would add a new screen so click on plus you want to add a you'll, you'll add a blank screen by default anyway um, and then what you can do is you can actually move components between screens. So I've taken button two from screen one and I've put it onto screen two like that. Um, so really quickly to go through it again, click the plus to add a new screen and then you can drag and drop uh, as usual or you could actually clone a component or duplicate a component on some other screen and then you can reuse it, let's say, uh, on, on other screens. So rather than having button one, button two and button three on screen one, um, at the finish up here, I've got button one and button three on my first screen, and then I've got button two moved to, to screen two. And uh, so again, just a way to, to save time um, when you're when you're developing in in a hurry and trying to get things done as as quickly as possible. Um, the next thing then as well is so let's let's say we want to make it a little bit more advanced. Um, we've got our screen laid out the way we want. Um, so a typical type thing that you might have is a sign in screen where you're giving the user, you know, a username and a password. Uh, you might have a checkout screen where you're asking them to fill in their name and their address and, you know, whatever their, their um, preferred payment option is. Um, and you might have that in all of your apps. So you've got a, an app for a, a bookstore, you've got an app for a cafe or something like that. You might want to reuse the sign in screen. You might want to reuse your, your checkout screen, your payment screen uh, across different apps. Um, and again, another way that you can save a huge amount of time is actually by saving screens. So this function or this icon, it's only available on the screen components. So just to draw your attention to the fact here that I've selected screen one, and then we get this little, it looks like a folder with a little plus here. Uh, this is the icon. You'll only see that on the screens. Uh, if you click on the button, for example, you can't save a button as a screen because it's not a screen. Uh, but let's, let's have a look at that in action here. So when you click on the uh, plus one, it says save to my screens and you can call it whatever you want. So it could be my sign in screen, my checkout screen, my um, directory screen, whatever it is uh, that you think you might want to use. Um, and you can share projects and share screens and everything with your, your teammates. And this will allow you to, uh, again, iterate quickly um, and to, to test out new ideas uh, as fast as you can. Um, yeah, and one other thing I suppose maybe is that when you are kind of working on some functionality. We'll look at how to add some functionality now. I generally wouldn't spend too much time at the beginning of a project on, on the design. Um, I would be more focused on making sure that it works the way it's intended to work. And then I would usually come back at the end. Everybody obviously works slightly differently, but I would come back at the end then and, you know, set the color scheme and the fonts and the um, and the design, maybe the, the way I want it, because that, that can be a very time consuming process. And when you're on a tight timeline. Um, I think having it, ma making sure that it works the way you want it to work is probably the most important thing. And yeah, it's very important that it looks nice as well. Um, but that would, that would usually be the, the second thing I would do. I'd usually come back and do a, a final pass at the design, cleaning up the, the design to make sure it looks good. So I think that's more or less the, um, the lot of my, my design tips there um, in terms of using the UI designer and also using some of those, um, duplicating the components, saving screens, uh, moving components between screens as well is a big, big, big time saver for me as well. Um, so that uh, pretty much wraps up the rapid prototyping section. And what we'll do now is jump into a, uh, actually what I might do if it's open is I might just share a copy copy that up with you really quickly uh, and show you how app sharing works. And then what we can do is uh, jump into the data-driven app section here and, uh, and take a look at that. Uh, okay, so I jump over here. Screen sharing is paused, resume sharing. see if I can share this. Oh, maybe I just need to share my whole screen. Okay, 
background. Hopefully you can all see this. Um, so yeah, so scenario here is I've got my, you know, my nice design, I've got my buttons and everything laid out the way I want it to. Uh, and then um, maybe I'm going to do a little bit work on the first screen and maybe let's say Gautam is my teammate and he's going to help me out with, with screen two. Um, so what I could do is I could uh, generate a, a sharing link for this. So up here, there's a share button. Uh, and this is for sharing the project itself. I can generate a sharing link and it creates here, we've got a little copy URL and we can make a copy of it. It's a temporary thing, so it only lasts for a few days, um, but I could uh, pop that into, into Slack or into email or whatever. Um, let me just see if that works there. Um, so that's, that's gone into the chat there. So if, I, if, if you wanted to click on that now, that will actually create a copy of this um, project that we've just seen um in in your version of Funkable. Now it might take a minute or two if you if you don't have an account you might need to set up the account to go through that process. But when you when this project loads you'll see you've got the label, the switch and my button one and button three that we had here. Uh, and you'll also see then that you've got a screen two here as well. So uh again a really useful way um particularly in, in, in a competitive kind of environment like a hackathon to uh, share your work and to distribute the work among the teammates is just to be like, okay, you're going to work on um, the, the gallery, let's say, that we're going to have on screen two and somebody else is going to work on the checkout page at screen three. And then at the end, what you can do is when you've got all those screens um, that, you, that you want, you save each of the screens and then you just open up a new project and you make a copy uh, from my screens like that. And then you just bring in whichever one you've got. So I've got a sign in screen. I've got a splash screen. Oh, this is my demo account. Sorry. So in my personal account, I have dozens of screens uh, that I can, I can reuse or like doing um, email validation and, and all these kind of things like that, that I, that I would use on a, on a regular basis. Um, but yeah, they're a great, great feature to have. Um, so yeah, let's check how we're doing for time. Good. 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 We're about, about halfway through, I think. Um, so the second thing I want to do then is show you how to turn um, a database, let's say not a database, a, a data table, such as Airtables or Google Sheets. So Airtable is a, is a kind of a newer one. It's a little bit more powerful. Um, Airtable. Uh, com, like this. Um, there's a great free package. So I have used the pro package in the past. It's, it's excellent. But at the moment, I'm using the free package as well. And uh, we're able to do loads and loads of um, great things with that. A particularly useful thing here is um, the, the templates that they have. So if, if you're um, uh, trying to, if you're, if you're coming at this as a new user, maybe, um, and you're, you're not familiar with it, it might be a little bit of, of a stretch to try and learn, you know, Fungible and learn Airtable in, uh, in a limited amount of time, but maybe if you decide to expand your app and, and continue developing it, this could be like the, the version two of your app where you might use something like Airtable, uh, which has a lot of database features and functionalities. Uh, but it, as you can see in the kind of screenshots here, it looks like um, uh, like a spreadsheet as well. Um, so let's see if I can do Google Sheets. I think everybody is familiar with. Um, so yeah, again, very popular, very widely used spreadsheet. Uh, and the nice thing with this um, is that it's all cloud-based as well. So Airtable is in the cloud. Once you have a, an API key to access it, um, it's directly um, available in your Thunkable app. And then Google Sheets, I'll, I'll actually show you as we're setting it up now, um, but it, um, yeah, it works, it works. Um, much the same way as adding in a, a a document from, from Google Docs. So um, let's create a uh, Twitter directory. But, uh, this, this could be any sort of um, project that we want it to be, but I'm going to, yeah, we've got two, two different data viewer components here. Um, so actually I haven't updated this yet, uh, but let's say we want to add in um, an alert here. And another way, if you're, if you're not familiar with, with a component, um, for example, I, I don't know what the alert is here. I don't know how it works. Uh, I can click on the learn more button uh, and it will actually bring you to our documentation and you'll be able to search then. It'll give you, this one is a, is a nice example because it shows you what it looks like on the web. It shows you what it looks like on an iOS device and it shows you what it would look like on Android. So you, you're gonna get a good feel before you even use it, um, what, what it is and what it does. Over here, it's all grouped by category. So we've got all the UI components are all in here. So the data viewer list is given here. 
um, in a lot of them, particularly for the more advanced ones. Um, we'll also have like sample apps. So in Data Viewer Grid, uh, it gives you an example of a tutorial on how to use it from our YouTube channel, but it also gives you a sample app um, and it'll bring you here to a, to a separate project page as well that you can you can test out this uh, this hockey app um, and it'll list all the hockey teams in the NHL. Uh, we can check out the Boston Bruins and then when you click on a team, uh, it might take a second or two here, um, but it's going to go off. It'll fetch some data. Um, we need to refresh this here. Show us the map, show us the team name. Okay, so we've got the team logo. Uh, it's got the team name, it's got, I can't scroll on this unfortunately, uh, but it should have a little map then of where the stadium is as well. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. So we'll uh, get a look at that later. Okay, so the docs anyway are a fantastic place to um, learn a bit more about how all these components work. Um, okay, so let's add in our data viewer list and we're gonna create a um, like a, a staff directory, let's say, if we wanted to, to do something like that. So we could have a, a list of all the, um, you know, the people who work in our organization. We could have a profile picture for what they all look like. And um, we could, um, yeah, we could have a link out then to their, to their email, to their phone number, uh, anything like that as well. Um, so let's uh, add in our data viewer list like so. And we have a couple of options then, um, three different options for um, adding in uh, the, the data source. So as I mentioned, you could connect to Google Sheets. Uh, just to give you a quick idea of this, um, we'll do directory. Um, it allows you to choose your, your headers. So you should probably have a row of headers in the, um, in the in the top row in the very first row and then also uh, it expects that there aren't any spaces below um, so hopefully there's data in the in the second row but if you need to lay out your, your data any other way um, you can also choose which row your, your data um, starts in and then what you can do is you can open up like this um, picking a um, a file or a folder directly from Google Drive and you can just click on whichever one um, you you want. Uh, and what that will do is it will just load it into, into Thunkable and it, the, the two will be connected then. So any change that you ever make to the spreadsheet will also be made um, to, the, to the app as well for the users. So it's great for keeping things up to date. Um, and then the other one, as we mentioned already, was, was Airtable. And when you sign in, you can go to your settings and you can get your, your API key. So that's just on your, your settings page. And what that will do is when you uh, refresh this, it will actually bring in a full list of all of your Airtable um, databases. Uh, so you might have a couple of samples there by default. You can create your own one. And then, um, yeah, you can um, choose, choose which one you want to use as your, as your database where all your information is stored. Um, but just to make things just one little bit easier for ourselves, we're going to create a local table and we'll call it our uh, office directory. That. Um, and let me just move myself over here slightly. Um, so you can choose then um, the whatever data source that you want. The default table in is table one, but you can, you can add more tables like that. And then whether the data is in Google Sheets, whether it's in Airtable or whether it's in this local table, um, you will be able to see all of the data right here in Thunkable without having to kind of go back and forth. Um, so let's have some names right here. It's capital letters, uh, name, and then uh, we're gonna do an image like this, uh, or a picture, that will do it. Uh, but you can call them whatever you want. So we've got um, the name column here. And now we've got the image column, and we can we'll we'll expand on this a little bit later as well. We'll add in some new columns, um, and um, we can add in email address, phone number, all that kind of thing. Uh, so that's gonna put me in here first. No, I'm gonna put in work first, so thinkable. And then I'm gonna put in me. And then I'm gonna put in. Where we? Okay. Uh, so let's go to Twitter. Let's go to the Thunkable homepage. Uh, and I'm gonna just really quickly 
Um, so again, you could put these anywhere. Airtable is actually a great place for uh, saving all these uh, images. Uh, I don't think I saved that properly. So let me try again. Copy the image address is what I wanted, the image. Uh, so you can see it's just the link. So you can see it's the URL and we're linking to the, to the JPEG uh, there. The other thing we want then is uh, there. My photo. So you've seen this one already at the beginning of the uh, profile. This was me outside our, our office in San Francisco uh, last year when it was nice and sunny and when uh, we did not have to work remotely. And then let's get, um, I think I might find some more people in here. No, I'm not signed in. So. Um, no, that's not him. Um, okay, Funkable. There he is, AK Signal. Uh, and copy our image address. And this would be great for the example as well. So um, now we have a column of names and we have a column of images. And once that data is kind of set up and once you've got your kind of schema figured out, uh, you want to just set up what the last thing here, which are called data bindings. So you can choose, we've got some built-in layouts here. Uh, and for the first one, you could just have the person's name or we could give their, their title. Um, so you could, or maybe here, let's say their, their department, what kind of area of the company they were working in. Um, we could have here, we'll probably go for um, the image and the name of the person. Um, but you could have their, let's say, profile picture, you could have their name, their department, and then maybe over here, you might show their extension. So you know what, uh, what phone number to call to, to look them up. Uh, this one here has a lot of information. So two images, uh, two kind of subtitles, a title. There's quite a bit there. Um, that's maybe too much. We could maybe get something like this, where we've got an image and then a title, but I'm not sure if we want this subtitle here. So we'll come back to this a bit later uh, and see if we can, uh, and I'll show you how to uh, customize all of these things. So our image is going to come from the image column. Um, so which column do you want to get the title from? And that will be the name like that. And then um, there are a variety of different ways to, to test as well. So I haven't shown you any of these um, things yet, uh, but Thunkable allows you to design. It allows you to add functionality and it also allows you to, to test all at the same time. And um, so one thing you can do is you can kind of real time preview your, your design um, directly in the editor. And you can see here, uh, what it's done is it's fetched the image and the name from, from the columns and it's displayed them as three different items here in our uh, list viewer. Uh, so that's cool. Um, another thing you can do is you can live test. So uh, we've got a kind of a web test here. This is what it would look like as a, as a web app, I suppose. Uh, it's a slightly bigger phone. It might be a little bit easier to see. Um, but my, my favorite way of testing is via the live apps. So um, if you click on live test, and at the same time, if you also have Thunkable Live open on your device. So um, if you go to the app store and search for Thunkable, um, oh, it's not gonna like this, is it? Yeah, if you go to the app store and search for Thunkable, um, you'll, you'll see this app here, it's called Thunkable Live. You can see the Thunkable Beaver here. This is, this is what it will look like. But um, yeah, you can, you can install that on your, um, on your phone and you can actually preview the app as well in, in real time. So this is so quick. It, it means, again, it's another one of these ways where Thunkable saves you a lot of time. Uh, you don't have to build the app and then wait for all the files to build and then wait for them to be exported to your simulator or wait for them to be exported to your device. It's literally a matter of uh, clicking on the uh, live test button up here. Like so uh, I'll see if I can show you. Um, it's, it's, it works fine here, but it just, it's, uh, it's a little bit tricky to see in the background. Oh, I'm actually logged in with my demo account. So I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to show you here. I've got my personal account on my phone. I've got my, my demo account here in the screen. So you need to make sure that you're logged in with the same account. But um, yeah, so uh, previewing, previewing in the web like this is, is a good option as well. Um, and it'll do a little flicker there when it's, um, all it was doing was pulling in the, the data from the table, making sure that everything was, was up to date. So because this is a list viewer now, we can click on things and we can also add in uh, some swipe functionality as well. Uh, so let's see, for example, if we, we add in the left swipe um, option, 
we can um because of, because i'm using people's twitter profiles here and um, let's make it um tweet let's send them a tweet maybe and we can change the color here can make this kind of um, teal color and now you can see that when this previews we'll actually be able to swipe each one of those elements individually to the left like this it just hasn't uh, updated the color yet but again if you give it a chance or maybe reload the page sometimes and um, there's there's a lot going on in my on my computer at the moment between screen sharing and uh, i've got other tabs and pre presentations and stuff open as well but um yeah you'll see you'll, you'll see that that flicker where it does does the ref refresh um and yeah it's, it's uploaded there now so lovely and uh, we can click on that um we can also preview it in uh, the live test uh, and you can preview it on your phone and then if you wanted to send it to somebody else um you could actually download it as an android app and you can um, send the apk in google drive or i think you can whatsapp them you can't email them um, gmail doesn't allow you to attach apks uh, but you can also um, download the ios app here so you can um, type in any email address you could email this off to a friend for for testing as well um, okay so that hopefully gives you an idea of, of how to test things uh, what we want to do now is add a bit of functionality to it so up until now we've been focused on creating a user interface we've been we've just looked at how to um, add a data binding to that as well and uh, the last thing I'm going to do for maybe the last 10 minutes or so is just add some functionality to it so to do that we're going to need to use this blocks editor over here um, and if this works here if it loads it might take a second um, excellent okay uh, so just got stuck there I just hit refresh or it just took a little bit longer than I was expecting so I just hit refresh um, what I'm going to do here is when the data viewer um, we could have it do something when we click on any one of the items and it can also have when we swipe you're also able to click those buttons so there's three different ways that you can interact with each um, each element on the screen so let's go with the left swipe click and what we want to do is we want to open up the, the profile then for the person that we've um, clicked on so what we're going to do is um, we want to go to their their profile page. So for example, just to show you what that looks like, it will be twitter.com and then forward slash their Twitter username. Uh, now you've probably uh, already figured out uh, what's going to happen here, but twitter.com forward slash thinkable, let's say, will, will work. So we're going to do that one anyway. Uh, so we've got a couple of different options here. These um, blocks at the top, let's close these ones here. These blocks at the top are all the kind of things that you would see in any any programming language. So, for example, in our control, we can do conditions. We can do if if else. You can add. Um, you can change the shape here. You can add in multiple different tests. So we can have if else if else if. You can have as many different uh, checks as you want. You can have a catch all at the end then for a final else block. Uh, we don't need quite as many as that, but you know you can you can configure it uh, any way you want. Um, then. We can do um, navigation within the app. We can do delays or, or pauses. So we've got a wait block here. Uh, we've got a variety of different loops. So loop forever, loop a specific number of times. We've got like a for loop here. So for, um, yeah, from, from one to 10. Um, we can also go through each item in a list that will be kind of helpful for us. And then we've got a while loop and an until loop, um, which is a very useful one there. And yeah, uh, kind of a, a ternary operator here, um, breaking out of loops. But actually, the one that we're using here is going to be this open link block. So, for example, we wanted to go to, um, you can use text here. So, in the text drawer of blocks, you've got um, pretty, pretty standard text operations here for um, working with um, strings, uh, parsing strings, converting strings, doing um, a few different things like that. So we're going to go to uh, join um, twitter.com forward slash. And then what we want to do is get the user's um, Twitter, Twitter name. Um, so if we go to uh, our data sources blocks, we can get a value from our office directory uh, in table one in the name uh, column. Uh, and that will that will work for for one of these anyway and we can use the row id so if we click on row one it will pass this uh the hash of that row 
um, to this block and then we'll be able to uh, open up that. We can also do yeah, some, some error handling here. So again, this is another tip when it comes to building, um, building out blocks and adding uh, functionality is that you can just add a label um, and log the, the error then to, to your label. Um, so what do we want to do here? Let's, let's test this out. So um, you, you might have guessed that the first one will work, uh, but the second two uh, kind of won't. Um, so we've got Thunkable here. That's perfect. Um, we can open up uh, at Donal here as well, uh, which is Donald uh, McLennan, I think. So that's not, not me, uh, but it is at Donal. Uh, and then same thing here as well. We'll open up at Arun. Uh, and this is an Arun, all right, but it's not it's not a rune from Thunkable. Um, so we won't, um, yeah, it, two, you know, one out of three probably isn't isn't quite good enough here. Uh, so as a workaround, as I mentioned earlier, um, or as a solution to this, not as a workaround, but as a solution, what we want to do is add in a new column. Uh, so we can call it uh, username. Like that. Uh, I'll probably use a capital letter, keep things consistent. Uh, thunkable is fine. That will still be uh, Thunkable. And my username is going to be Dono O'Hanlon. The only uh, risk there is that I uh, don't type it correctly. And then we saw is AK Sagal. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, what that will do if we go back to our blocks is rather than getting the um, Twitter username from the name column, uh, the image column is no good because uh, we'll just go to, well, I mean, no, it's still no good because uh, it's not the right path. And then username is what we want because it'll get their specific username, like so. Um, you can see it blink for a second. Uh, Twitter's are done. <laughs> Thunkable is still going to work fine. And now we can open up my profile and it actually brings me to me, which is great. And then tweet it around. Perfect. Um, that works fine as well. Um, okay, so yeah, in terms of your, your data sources then, so when you've, you know, I've just demonstrated very quickly that you can get data uh, from, from a table. Uh, you can also update, so you can, it, it follows the kind of standard like CRUD um, and paradigm there or schema, let's say, where you can create, you can read, you can update, and you can uh, delete. So there's the option to create a row, um, and you can specify values then for who they are, uh, what pi what picture to use and um, what their username should be. Um, so a cool thing to do, let's say, would be um, yeah, I can I can probably demo this really quickly. Um, is we could have the user take a selfie and upload that as their as their image. Now that that'd be an interesting one as well. Um, you could update and uh, so over overwrite uh, and you can delete uh, individual rows. And there's also uh, more kind of advanced stuff down here for working with. Um, objects and collections and, and stuff like that as well. So you can get a list uh, of all the people. You can delete all the rows. You can uh, get a row object and you can do use the, the different object blocks here. If you're familiar with um, using JSON, uh, you can do stuff like that as well. So maybe let me really quickly just, this, this again, this won't work, I don't think, because um, I'm using my, my webcam to, to stream to you at the moment. Uh, but again, if we were on the, the live app, uh, it certainly would. So I can put in a camera. So um, let's say, oh, I didn't go in. Let's add in a camera. And then this, this won't look particularly nice, but let's have a, say, a, a text box like that uh, for a username. And then I'll say your name. another one. And let's do uh, Twitter. Like that. Um, so yeah, this text box two is for Twitter. Text box one is for your um, for your username. So let's say they click the button and we get them to take a picture of themselves or they could take a picture of anything to be their, their profile photo. And in our data sources then we could create a new row, and we want them to have their name and their username. So their name is going to be the whatever they type into um, text box one or text input one, excuse me. Their um, Twitter username then is going to be typed into the, the second one. And the image, we can actually pass the image from the 
camera like that. So you see there's lots of these um, purple functions or procedures and they will actually return um, outputs as well. So we could pass the photo to as an input to something else um, like that. And then, yeah, again, we can have a, a little label here for ourselves just to say complete or done or whatever it was, or we could maybe just output if we were debugging, we can output the row ID. We can see that a new row ID has been created. Um, but there's a lot of different things that you can that you can do there with this um, with this system with these with these blocks. So mindful now that I've shown you a, a huge amount of stuff from designing pro tips for designing, uh, and I, I, I think probably the most useful in terms of um, of your own kind of use cases is this data viewer. Um, I'm gonna maybe pause the presentation here, I think, and open it up for. Uh, a few questions, and I, I think I'll probably go back into Thunkable and, and do um, a few demonstrations then of uh, of what's happening, what's going on. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know, uh, Lavanya, maybe if you have any questions or anything like that, or uh, if anybody else has questions that they want to um, type into the chat or to ask us, I, I'm not sure how you kind of want to moderate this. Yeah, so we've just enabled the chat and now if any of you have any questions, uh, we'd like if you can tap, uh, type it into the chat. So even there, while you're while you're thinking of questions, if there was anything from the slides, I appreciate. I also probably speak a little bit quickly as well. So if there's anything from the slides that people want me to kind of go back over, or if I if I can do some of the the data viewer demonstration again, uh, also happy to to do that if if people would like a. So, a so we have a question. Mm -hmm. So what sort of limits does the app have? Like, can I can I? Uh, so Jay wants to know: Can he maybe make a? A Tinder replica within Thunkable or a Facebook replica, maybe? Um, the short answer is is yes, uh, you can. Yeah, make make apps like that. That's no problem at all. Um, you could you can you can build them from from scratch as well. So um, you could have like that the the spreadsheet or our sign in component um, uh, work as. The, you know, the way to get your users to sign up, whether it is a kind of a Tinder replica or whether it is a Facebook replica. Um, and then you'd want to, so with Facebook, you'd have, you'd have lots of different things there. Probably the, the stream, I guess, is what you would want to work on first. So have that kind of um, stream of, of posts or images or whatever it is. Uh, with Tinder, the, the thing that would be the most challenging to do is to implement the, um, the swiping uh, gesture. But yeah, if, if I can just um, explore that idea a little bit um, with you, uh, let me share this again. Um, so the um, Thunkable community, as I'd mentioned there, um, we have, what did I want to show first of all? Yeah, so we have this community here, um, you should sign into it, I guess, so you can uh, search it and build up your profile and stuff as well. Um, the one that I wanted to demonstrate was Snapgram, first of all. Uh, so this is kind of our sample app for um, the, yeah, no, it's like, it's, it's a feed, it's got um, lots of different uh, images in it. So this is a, a deep dive into using our um, cloud storage component as well, but it allows you to uh, take an image and it also allows you to set how many um, images get displayed. And I wanna see if there was a uh, prototype app. I think it's actually on the on the YouTube page itself. So again, just another a quick plug for our YouTube channel here as well. Um, that uh, when you open up our tutorials, yeah, there'll be stuff here. When you open up our tutorials, you'll be able to see um, remix links for, for these projects as well. Um, so uh, it'll give you a live preview of, you know, you, you could see any of our users here uh, who might have taken some pictures of themselves already, or maybe we cleared this out. Um, but yeah, if you make a copy of this, you can see we've got little placeholders here for all your images to, to be displayed in. Uh, you can see it's a relatively popular app, so it's been remixed over 10,000 times. Um, and then you can always, you can, you can 
can leave it a star as well um, and you can show that you show your appreciation for it for the developer as well um, so that's kind of a, the, the social media element to it, the designing out the the feed and then I think the other one I have is the uh, carousel um, there's a yeah buttons and texts so do I have a little demo here don't but again this is another um, no, that's a very simple one um, a couple of a couple of examples of this on the on the community and making a photo slideshow is this the one okay that's a that's the same one um but yeah we've got a couple of examples here of um slideshows and carousels where you can tap on the edge of the screen uh, and you can also swipe across the screen let's say and it will it will behave in, in much the same way and um, you'll be able to to swipe through an image um, we have another question from the uh, audience and so uh, are the apps made by Thunkable responsive across a variety of Android and iOS devices? So yeah, by default or out, out of the box, you, you get complete control over that. Um, so you can, like I say, with the sizing options, um, you can add, um, you know, the fit contents or fill container and let it figure it out for itself. Um, and that, that works pretty well for, for most use cases, I find. Um, if you have a specific design guidelines, you can go in and you can specify the, the exact pixels. And so that's a little bit trickier um, to work with on all devices. So with the new uh, iPhones, for example, they'll have a really high pixel density. So that, so like a 200 by 200 will be quite small on a screen, whereas an older device, 200 pixels by 200 pixels will take up, a, you know, a, a, you know, like we saw on the screen there, it'll be quite large. Um, and then probably the best compromise then is to use the responsive options that we have, where you can have it be 20% of the screen or 50% of the screen. So you got, you have those options there to let the, let the app figure it out for itself with fit contents uh, or fill container. Um, you can have the exact pixels, uh, which, um, if you want it to be uh, working well across iOS and Android and the web and all the various different types of computer monitors, that's probably not the one that you would want. Uh, and then if you wanted yeah, something a little bit more um, flexible, use the, the percentage sizings there, use the, the responsive sizings. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Yeah, but you, you have options there to choose whichever one suits your use case, I think. Uh, and we have another question from Ronit uh, in the chat room. Cool. Uh, is there a way to add a payment gateway uh, integrated payment option in the app for e-commerce? And then if yes, does it include an extra cost of maintenance? So if you had asked me last year, yeah, we had an integrated uh, Stripe payment for taking uh, credit card payments. And the answer was yes, that there was a small commission. It was 1% or 2% that we charged on the uh, payments at the time. Um, the um, issue with that, uh, unfortunately, is that it precludes you then from publishing on the App Store. Uh, so at the moment, App Apple require that you have Apple payments. And I think shortly Google will be requiring that you use GPay as well uh, for theirs. So we're working on, on adding in an in-app in -app purchases. Uh, yeah, sorry, I've got my, my demo account open there, as, as I saw there. Um, so I, I on the demo account, that's what you would see when you log in. Uh, when I log in on my own account, that's kind of got some of the, the test components there uh, but it would be very similar to say our, our Airtable component where it's just a matter of getting your the correct API key and just copying and pasting it in so it's it is on the way um, and it will be added shortly or will be added hopefully towards the end of this year um, and it will be a, a pretty easy one to, to set up as well but uh, right right now uh, there has been in the past uh, and there, there will be in the future uh, but there there isn't right now uh, and um, I'm, not, I'm not sure actually if the, so the Stripe one did, did include a maintenance fee. Um, and then I, I'm not sure if we'll have a, I, I, we probably will, I would just to be honest with you, we probably will have a small maintenance fee then for the, um, the payments, but I'm not sure how a payment structure is, is planned around that yet. Um, there's a great question there from uh, Nikhil, is it that can we choose to see the source code? Uh, can we make changes in the source code that would automatically reflect in the blocks section? Now that's there are two yeah different questions. Um, so yeah, there yeah we've lots lots of very technical users and lots of developers who use this. Uh, our stack would be kind of includes uh, Expo is one of the frameworks, and then React Native is is probably one of the the more well known ones. Um, 
that that allows us to do all the the kind of cross platform React and React Native to to you know between webs uh, web apps and and cross platform apps. Uh, at the moment, um, it's it's not something that we're going to do in the in the near term. Um, in the in the future, we might, uh, but it's not it's not something that we're focused on. The code that comes out at the moment is kind of like machine readable only. Um, you yeah you you definitely wouldn't be able to edit um, what 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 comes out of the editor right now and uh, it would require quite a bit of work on on our end as well to make that kind of a nicely formatted structured um, human editable uh, text file so <clears throat> we're not we're not um, pushing to do that right now and then the other thing then the interesting things so are the blocks themselves they're all <clears throat> pieces of XML that are on the screen um, and there wouldn't uh, I haven't heard anybody mention any ability to add blocks through source code because that's, so not only would you need to have all the JavaScript programming, you'd need all the XML then on top of that, uh, which is probably not worth your while. Um, but um, in answer to the first question, uh, that, that might be coming in the future. Um, but there's no uh, firm deadline, I guess, uh, around that. No problem at all. Thank you for your questions. Um, yeah, are there any other questions then along? Like, did people have, um, let's call it a, a style or a genre of app? So we've heard kind of Facebook, for example, mentioned there um, that, that they're thinking, oh, I want to build, um, yeah, uh, fa Facebook for college students, uh, which I guess is what, what it started as. Uh, or I want to build, um, yeah, in Instagram for, um, a coffee shop or whatever, co co coffee shop chain or something. Uh, is it, you know, do, do people have in their mind already, I want to build X for Y uh, by any chance? And uh, happy to kind of show you a few more um, examples there of, of what people have built and what we've built as well for, for our users. So uh, there's a question uh, Can we have integration with things like Google Maps and Google or Facebook login? Yeah. Um, I will start with the second one first, login, and then I'll go and I'll jump in and show the, the maps. So that's a great question. Um, so our default um, sign-in option is actually using uh, uh, Firebase, uh, Firebase login. And we've got a super detailed tutorial here in the community uh, that goes through all the blocks you would need to set this up yourself. So this is in terms of doing the authentication, doing resets, doing uh, account deletions as a whole. This is a, a very in-depth, very involved tutorial that uh, Jane, my colleague, has created. Uh, it's also probably one of the most remixed projects as well. So again, everything is like open source. You can clone it, you can reuse it yourself. Um, now, if I can find, will it be Facebook login maybe? Um, we don't have a Facebook or a Google login component. Uh, but we do have a um, wonderful community and they have the same questions as well. Um, so let's sort by the latest post here. Uh, excellent. What I'll do is I'll pop this one in the chat um, so you can have a link to it here. Uh, so this is Eddie, one of our power users. And um, yeah, here we go. Let's uh, open up the chat and then Facebook. Again. Um, so this is a fantastic tutorial as well and an example of how to uh, use our, our web viewer component uh, and um, yeah what has he got there a whole bunch of um, so there's Google there's Facebook there's Twitter I'm actually not sure off the top of my head what the, what the other couple ones are but you can have a whole suite of, of login features there and um, yeah if you know for a fact if, you, if your college is on Google and you know that everybody is using Google login that's definitely the the quickest fastest way of course to to get them added in um, yeah so the the first part I think then was about Google Maps or maps um, so we recently just uh, launched an update to to our mapping component uh, to give you an overview in the docs um, you can <clears throat> Um, set the, the position and the elevation of the map. You can also totally style the map whatever way you want. Um, and then there's, yeah, so just have a look here really quickly. Um, you can yeah, add markers, you can uh, add lines to the map. So you can draw borders, you can draw boundaries, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, you can add shapes as well. So 
squares, polygons, etc. Uh, we've got sample codes there. And then there's some new blocks in here as well. So we've got events and we've got um, working with the location sensor, detect when the user is moving around. Um, and then when somebody taps on the, on the map itself or presses and holds on the, the map. So, um, okay, let me see really quickly if we can add this in. I can add in a new screen. Uh, the map component here, we can just search for that. And like, that's, that's how difficult it was to, to add a map uh, to, to the app. Um, so if, if you've tried doing this before in uh, whatever reactor doing it in the, in the Android SDK where you're importing the maps SDK and uh, doing all the initialization around it. Um, if we just take a look here. It's already, it's set up and it'll default to the, to the office in San Francisco here. Uh, should load, should load fine on the, on the web preview as well. Oh, that needs to be loaded on a, on a physical device, I think, right? Okay. Um, so maybe I'll try and get that set up, but yeah, that's another great reason for, for using the, the Thunkable Live app there. Um, so there's a there's a good few examples, and again, if you were to search the community for maps or mapping apps, um, you'll see where people have got uh, whatever all their favorite sports clubs. They've mapped them out. You can click on them. You can find their location. Actually, even to go back to the data viewer app as well, um, where the the one we looked at was the the hockey app, where it shows where all the NHL teams are. It shows where all their their stadiums are. On the map as well so um there's yeah lots of cool things that can be done with the with the app and yeah maybe maybe worth mentioning one more time that the, the best way to preview them is is on your on your device uh it, itself as well yeah and we have a question on whether we can do image or video processing on the apps like for example applying filters or overlays on images and videos i didn't catch the first part of that question sorry maybe my internet just cut out there i think uh, can we do image or video processing on the apps? Like, like for example, like adding filters or overlays on the images or the videos? Mm, for videos, I would say no, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I don't think uh, that's a feature that's available just yet. Um, some of the interesting things then that we've done with uh, images, yeah, it'd be, yeah, it's a tricky one to, to demo here, but um, with say a button or or a column maybe would be a, a good one. Um, if I just uh, jump back into Thunkable really quickly here for you. Um, the, let's get rid of that map. Let's add a column here or any any um, layout here that we like. Add a layout here like that. Um, so there is the option here to set a background picture for a column and you could have like nested columns. Uh, so one of the kind of really nice workarounds that we've done here is, um, let, me, let me let me do it, let me just do it locally. So the idea would be that you would take a picture with your camera uh, or wherever you, well, from your camera, I suppose. And then the background picture of um, column one would be your, um, your picture. So let me see if I can, uh, we sincere get one of those screenshots that I used and I will do. Okay, so this should hopefully, yeah, uh, display here, I think, and then let's set it to be um, contain. And let's see what that looks like. Hopefully, it's not too, it'll be a little bit stretched. <clears throat> so that's one of the screenshots there from my presentation, but that is underneath uh, column two. So yeah, this will be a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit um, rough, rough and ready as a, the presentation. Um, but then you could apply a kind of a, a filter effect um, here. So let's give it a kind of a blue tint maybe um, like that. Um, and what you can do then is you can actually just change the um, the overlay in column two. So that can all be done via the, the blocks as well. Uh, there's an option here in the blocks, um, we've got all these uh, color color options here. So you can use RGB values, you can use HSL values, and then you could also just, um, actually, sorry, that's what I want to So column two, background color, like that. Um, so let's say after we take our picture, We'll take a picture and then if you wanted to have uh, something with a bit of opacity you can use uh, RGBA and a 
and then you could have uh, something kind of red and then give it a 50 percent 0 0.5 uh, opacity um, like that so using rgba values you can set the, the opacity up and down and that's what allows you then to um, give this kind of fil filtering type uh, effect to, to your images as well. Um, so yeah, and <clears throat> there's also, if you wanted to get really in depth into it, we have a canvas component. So you could put that image, not into the column, but you could put it into the canvas and using the sprites. Um, if you want to do something like Snapchat, you could have glasses or um, hats or whatever it is then that you wanted and you can move. And the nice thing then about them being sprites is that you can move them around and you can position them then you can rotate them. You can do a lot more with the canvas, but again, it's a, it's a more complex component, um, but it still allows you to do those kind of uh, Snapchat style um, filters as well as the kind of Instagram style filters that we just saw there. And now I guess we just have time for one last question. So here, so there's a question on whether geotagging functionality is available. Geotagging for? The app. Like, uh, while building, so while building the app, is the geo tagging functionality included? Like, um, you, like so, in, like in Uber, for example. Oh, gotcha. Um, let me really quickly have a look. We had a cool Uber style sample app, which we may have um, removed. Um, Beaver Bingo, work credit. Da, 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 da. Mm, that's not there anymore. That actually might might be in the community. Uh, there was a sample app called Ride that had the map and it took the user's location. Um, but we do have a, a location sensor. Um, so you would use the, if, if I were doing it, uh, something like yeah, an Uber Eats or a delivery app or something like that, um, I would use the location sensor to get the user's location. Uh, it'll tell you the latitude and the longitude. Um, sometimes when people are signing up, building kind of sign up apps, they will also use the location sensor with um, like a location API. So like Google Maps API, and that will also tell you your address. Um, so there's a, a cool example there where, um, you know, you can just click a button, it gets your fit your latitude and longitude, sends it off, and then you get back from Google Maps, so it will ten, send you back your um, address. And um, it can, yeah, it can tell you where you are. But then the, the other thing then with, uh, as we saw with the Google Map, Maps component is that it will allow you to input a latitude and a longitude. So you can do that. Um, so the default was to do it manually. Um, so you can just type in the values, but you can also do it dynamically. So from the location sensor, you could put a little pin on the map and that map can be where you are standing uh, right now. And that can show you where the nearest taxi is or where your, your delivery driver is or anything like that as well. For sure, and I see Gautam has uh, put a link to the to the ride app in there. Um, it's in the it's a, it's an it's an older app. We um, definitely it's definitely been out over a year anyway, and so we try to try to keep what we have uh, fresh in the sample apps as well. But yeah, that's a it's a great question. Thanks, Yeah, thank you so much for that answer. And sadly, that's all we have time for. So thank you so much. It was a highly insightful session, and we're great to have had you with us. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. Best of luck to everybody in, in the competition. Really excited to see um, what people build. And like I say, if you want to reach out in the community or email or chat as well, do do remember just to, to uh, mention uh, bits or to mention Desert Hacks 2020 and uh, we'll, we'll know where you're coming from then as well. So that, that'd be great. Thank you. And I would also like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to our other workshops we'll be hosting this week. So coming up tomorrow is uh, a workshop on AWS serverless hosting from 6.30 to 8 p.m., followed by workshops on attaining product market fit and pitch deck making on Wednesday and Friday. Hope to see you all there. And feel free to follow us on social media. Sweet. Great. Thanks, man.